How are you this evening, Mr. Shattuck? A day older since the last time you asked me. You know, you're gonna get that poodle. Good, wonderful. I'm happy for you. <laughs> Another hot one, huh? Yeah, very nice. Listen, you wanna know something? Upstairs, in the kingdom of heaven, they got a special department. It's a celestial bureau. It's staffed by a hundred fallen angels, and it's got one job. You know what it is? No. To harass Abel Shaddy. <laughs> Somebody up there doesn't like you much, huh? And I can hear the staff meetings now. Monday, we'll give him prickly heat. Tuesday, two bum checks he'll get. On Wednesday, the bank will call one of his notes, and on Thursday, We'll send his nephew, Stanley, to stay with him. And on Friday, which is today, we'll give him a heat wave. We'll give him 98 degrees with humidity yet, so we'll have insomnia and have to lie awake all night worrying about something worse than Friday. <laughs> What's worse than Friday? Saturday. <laughs> How long you had this delicatessen here, Mr. Shadow? Ah, uh, since God created the earth. Give or take a couple of years. It's an atonement for some past sin. I figure it this way. In another life, I was the Russian Tsar. So that committee, they met up there, and they decided that during my next life, they were gonna give me the business. This business. <laughs> Every cloud has a silver lining, Mr. Shattuck. It's always darkest before the dawn. That's what they say. Yeah, that's what they say. Well, whoever said that, should have drops put in their eyes. <laughs> You're quite a character, Mr. Shattuck. <laughs> I'll look in on you tomorrow night. Yeah, you do that. And if you find me hanging on a hook alongside the chickens, don't put out a drag net. It'll be self-inflicted. But tell them not to pull down the wrong bird. They'll find five birds hanging on a hook, all about 70 years old. I'm the one with the pants. <laughs> Benji. Yeah, 
Yes. One pint pickled herrings. Yes. One loaf fried bread. You want a slice? All right. Yes, lady, I'm writing it down. The Chinese waiter, I'm not. Two dozen eggs. That's it? No, lady, I don't deliver. No. I'm too poor for a truck and too old for a bicycle. Well, suit yourself. You want to come in and pick it up? Come in and pick it up. That's right, lady. Independent. Delivery yet. Food stamps, looking numbers. Get the jackpot in the president. A black year on the 20th century. Well, another scorcher, Benji. Yeah, the hot spell continues. Your cousin Stanley, he's been here for six days. Oh, I told you that yesterday, yeah. Well, as I told you, your cousin Stanley has all the charm of a untipped waiter. He commutes between his bed and the country club. And in case I fail to mention it, your cousin Stanley is not my cup of tea. Can I help you, lady? Good morning. Um, I wonder, does Mr. Banner live here? Mr. Banner. Oh, Mr. Banner. Formerly Mr. Bloom. No, strictly speaking, he doesn't live here. He just drops in occasionally in between his big deals. Mr. Banner, formerly Mr. Bloom, is my nephew. You must be Mr. Shabby. I must be. So what can I get for you? Well, my name is Gloria Ross, and I met your nephew at the club last night. At the club? Yeah, at the country club. Oh, the country club. Wonderful. Maybe you mentioned that Mr. Bloom, Mr. Banner. No, you didn't mention it. You see, by the time my nephew with the new name returned to his bed early this morning, I already had five hours sleep and two sizable nightmares. One of them having to do with an avenging angel that knocked on my door and told me that Mr. Banner formerly Mr. Bloom, was gonna live with me for the rest of my life. So no, lady, I didn't talk to my nephew. Morning, Cedric. The avenging angel with the chickens. Boy, sh surely you're familiar with the fresh air vacation plan? The what? The fresh air vacation plan? Your vacation place. So what about it? It's um well, here it's children we bring from the city yeah. and they spend two weeks here with families in the community. Okay. It's yes. wonderful. Yes. Yes. What we also do is we kind of check on the homes as a policy. Oh, the homes. Yeah, the nature of the homes and before the children are entering it and mm -hmm. and also to see the compatibility. Compatibility. And uh, listen, I just want to ask you one thing. How much does my nephew Stanley owe you? For his raffle ticket. There are no raffle tickets, Mr. Shaddy. You see what it is? It's when family sponsors. Uh, Mrs. Gold, you're here to purchase or just fondle? I only buy the fresh. These are fresh? They were until you passed with them. Do you want my business or don't you, Mr. Shaddy? I would welcome your business, Mrs. Gold, but your daily rub down of my chickens, I can do without. All right, I'll take, I'll take this one. Ah, the lucky chicken, the prize winner. He won himself a good home. Uh, just the chicken, Mr. Shellick. I'm not buying your thumb. For you, Mrs. Gold, a dollar ninety-nine. Oh, 
$1.99. And if it's no good, you'll hear from me. I won't sleep until I get your decision. <laughs> you won't sleep because you're too damn miserable. Listen, do me a favor. Take a cruise, anything, so I won't see you tomorrow. Oh, you're still here? What? Do you think I could speak to Stanley? No, I don't think so. Uh, you see, he's got a lot on his mind. Today, he's going to try and dress himself. But the child is already on its way, Mr. Shattuck. What child? I've been trying to explain it to you. The child, the, your nephew Stanley, Mr. Banner, Mr. Bloom, he, he volunteered. He volunteered? Yes. A child is coming here because my nephew Stanley volunteered? Lady, if Herman Goering had a child, I wouldn't wish him on my nephew. Now, if you want to take a boy and turn him into a delinquent and you want to use Stanley as the instructor, you made the perfect choice. You still don't understand, Mr. Shattuck. What? 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 Tell me. What don't I understand? You were supposed to be, in a sense, co-sponsors of the child. Stanley assured us that he'd be with you through the summer. Lady, do yourself a favor. Save yourself embarrassment and maybe a bum check. The next time that my big shot nephew steps into your country club, just show him the door and the restriction clause in your club's constitution. Really, Mr. Shattuck? Goodbye, lady. That's it. Finished. Done. What about the child? He's probably on the bus by now. So you'll take him off the bus. You really are living up to your reputation, Mr. Shattuck. Well, down to it. Is that a fact? You go ahead. Tell me about my reputation. Well, let's just say you're not the most beloved man in the community. Well, let's just say I don't give a damn. <laughs> That's painfully obvious. A little child coming all the way from oh, the slums. Lady, please, enough already. I'm supposed to have a breakdown because some nameless little mumser doesn't get his fresh air? I got my own problems. So you go back and you tell your members I got no time for children. No sympathy for their social charities, and no place for my nephew Stanley Banner. This is my final word. Again, goodbye. You're putting me in a dreadful position, Mr. Shattuck. I'll be on the phone for half of Lady, the day. Lady, please! Enough already! Cousin Stanley, he did it again. <laughs> I'll kill him. What's he like? <sighs> Scrooge from the east side. He put some poor, unsuspecting kid in with that bilious old goat would be scarred for life. But that kid may be on a bus now. We have to call New York. His name is Washington. Is it George? Not according to this. As in Booker T. Boy. gonna be gone two weeks. Would you look at him? Here he is, getting ready to make a trip out to the country. And he looks at me like the angel of death just walked in the room. Just think, Hermie, two whole weeks. 
You whole weeks of fresh air and fishing and swimming. <laughs> you know you're gonna have the best vacation of any boy in Harlem. You get a letter from Bill. You send it to me, you hear? Oh, yes. Now you remember, Herman, when you get off the bus, I want you to be a little gentleman. Because to see a well-behaved young man like you is gonna be a real education for him. I didn't want an education they ought to come up to Harlem for a couple of weeks. Oh, this child. Here. <laughs> Hold your head up. Never mind. Never mind, you got about an hour before bus time. Now that is one bus you ain't gonna miss. <laughs> and please, Herman, don't go getting yourself dirty. Put your jacket on. That's the first time you had on your new suit. Mind you, it cost $12. Just so you could look like a little gentleman. Remember, Herman, be... Polite. Polite. I want you to what? Smile. Smile. I want you to... Shake hands. Shake hands. Well, well, we got everything. Where's my, my pocketbook? Shaking hands. You gotta be all smiles for what? Yes, Grandma. I guess I'm ready. in a minute. Honey, look at you. Oh, How you doing? So hey, Herman. <laughs> Somebody died? Mm -mm. Not going to a funeral? Mm -mm. You look like you're going to a funeral. Two weeks in the country. Herman, going to the country. Which country? Fairview, New York. Anybody want to take my place? Mm-mm. It's going to be fun in the country. Hermie, give me the ball back. Herman. We, we, we got to go, baby. Let's go, Get you some cakes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, can't miss that box. This is one day I sure wish I didn't have to go into work. <laughs> now, Herman, make sure you get on the right bus. You hear me? Yes, Grandma. What you do is this. Look at the number on the bus. It ought to be the same as on this tag here. See? I tell you what, just show this to the bus driver, and, and, and he'll check it. Yes, Grandma. You know you're going to have a good time. <laughs> I wish I was going with you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Your brother's going to be so proud of you, because I know I'm proud of you myself. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know that? Yes, Grandma. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is a chance, I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. And write me a postcard because I want to know. I want to know what you do, what you see, and everything. You hear me? Yes, Grandma. Mm -hmm. 
Give me a little kiss. <laughs> yeah, I know you're going to have a good time. But I got to go, baby. Bye. Bye. Sonny, what bus you on? I didn't do nothing. I just minded my own business. Ah, shit. Ah, that's your bus right there. You can board it right now if you want. You first. Bus. So you're running from the law, are you? What you got in there? Stocks and bonds? I'm going to the country. Well, like I said, that's your bus out there. You have a good time in the country. <laughs> hey! Stay away from the fuzz. Last night. Let me ask you, do I deserve this? Gonna be hot today, huh? Atlantic City will be murder. I gotta be there by five. The guy I know got a disc attack. Topless. Looking for a manager. Could be three bills a week and a cut. Topless, hunk. How's that grab you? Well, me, it don't grab so much. But the Atlantic City Vice Squad, Stanley, give them a message for me, will you? Tell them that if they'll keep you in jail for more than 60 days, I'll send them free salami. My uncle, the sentimentalist. <laughs> Listen, I could be gone quite some time. I'm destitute. I bet. I'll send you a postcard from Atlantic City. Forget the postcards. Don't need a postcard. Stanley, do me a favor. If by some miracle you get this job and you have an extra $10 in your pocket, please buy some flowers for your mother's grave. You got a thing about death, don't you, Unc? And you don't, huh, Stanley? You're immortal. You don't die. Uh, How long has Ben been gone? 1944, wasn't it? It's almost 25 years. You keep his picture around, his effects. It's like he died on Thursday. Mr. Bloom, son of my late sister. My bed you can borrow, my telephone you can use, my food you're free to eat, but how I mourn my child and for how long, that's my business. You understand? All right. All right. Look at the time, huh? I'm gonna catch you 11 o'clock. You stay loose, Unc. Uh, just a minute, Mr. Rockefeller, if you don't find some unfinished business, namely your latest philanthropy. What are you talking about? The slum child that you're gonna entertain for two weeks. The lady was here this morning, Miss Ross.
Forgot all about that. I'll call it from the station. Oh, you do not, Stanley. Your unpaid debts I'll meet. Your indiscriminate charities, no. Relax. <laughs> okay, just be relaxed. I got a little high last night. They had this booth. They were signing up kids. They had one more spot. Uh, you know how it is? <laughs> I know how it is with you. A good deed is not enough. You have to have a brass band and a photographer. And how is it with you, Unc? Explain that question. I don't know how you survive. I manage. You manage. Seven days a week, hating everything you do, doing the same thing, up at six, open the cases, hang up the chicken, scream at somebody on the phone. Six o'clock at night, you lock it all up. Next morning, you do it all over again. <laughs> In the parlance of the time, Stanley, that's what's known as making a living. Easy, it's not. Enjoyable, it's not. But it's what all guys like me have to do to get by. I don't expect you to understand. Any guy who would change his name, like he changes his shirt, this is a person that wants the rose without the thorn. Life is not like that. Life is misery. But I made a pact with it. You made a pact with it. Uh, you love it. <laughs> You'd rather be caught dead than smile. Hey, Stanley, you want to see me smile? In heaven, I'm going to smile. When they read my will and they come to the part where it says how much I leave my nephew Stanley. A blank page. <laughs> I can't top you, Unc. Wish me luck. Luck. Luck, I wish you. Your name Joey? Did you have a nice trip? I'm Phyllis Nick. Well, there we go. Hey, what do you say? You the man what they call my sponsor. Stan Banner. And you are Herman Washington. Where are we going? No problem, Herm. Like, I've been waiting for you here, and all of a sudden I got this hurry-up call to get to Atlantic City. But I'll tell you what you do. You go down to the delicatessen. It's right down the street. You go out here, you make a right, you run right into it. My uncle's there. He'll look after you until I get back, all right? 11 a.m. Express to Atlantic City is now departing. That's my bus. Have a ball, Herm. I'll see you soon. Atlantic City. Don't let my, uh... My uncle turned you off. He's not a bad egg. He's just a little odd. Set in his ways. But you go down there, you tell him who you are. <laughs> I'm awful sorry to cut out on you like this. I mean that. Is your uncle like you? You don't dig me. You talk too much and you talk too loud.
go. You mean the suit? I mean, what can I get for you? What do you got? Well, what do you want? Got a Coca-Cola? Coca-Cola, you go to the drugstore. I'll take a glass of water. A glass of water. Customers like you, I can go bankrupt in a week. Herman D. Washington. Wonderful. I'm Abe Shattuck. I come on a bus just a couple of minutes ago. I came on a boat 55 years ago. What else would you like to discuss? This here is the address I'm supposed to go to. So, I'm your kid. Uh, Mr. Washington. Do you get the same impression that I do that what's occurring here is a breakdown in communications? Don't you dig, man. I'm supposed to stay here for two weeks. Stanley Banner, he's what they call my sponsor. He was at the bus station. He sent me here. They give me this here thing to tell me who was going to meet me and where I'm supposed to go. That's Stanley Cat, the one I met. Stanley, Stanley. He the one who said I should come over here and see you. Mr. Washington, the man that you accurately described as the Stanley Cat, Mr. Banner, he's left town. And in the process, he left you and me out on a limb. And uh, I'm afraid that, uh, I don't know how to tell you this, but, uh, There's nobody here to take care of you. There's nobody here to look after you. You understand? Okay. Is this what I use to go back to New York? Oh, yeah, this is your return ticket. To, uh, don't lose that. Uh, you got, uh, oh, you got a three hour wait for the next bus. Yeah, you missed 11.30. I want to ask you a question. Did you have lunch? I asked you a question. Did you have lunch? All right, come on. Want some lunch? I am asking you a question. Do you want some lunch? Do you want something to eat? I just go back on the bus. I don't want to stay here. All right, so you'll go back on the bus. But first, the least I can do is offer you something to eat. Do you see anything you like here?
what's that there? Which one? Show me. Oh, that's pastrami. You want a nice pastrami sandwich? What's pastrami? Oh, pastrami, it's uh, like corned beef. It's highly seasoned, and uh, it's, uh, it's Jewish. You Jewish? I don't look Jewish, right? Guy who owns our building, he Jewish. Man, he a pretty bad cat. Nobody like him. I ain't hungry. Where are you going now? To the bus station. Well, you got a three-hour wait. You might as well stay here. No. Why not? Because I don't like you. So? So you don't like me? So go sit in the hot station, boil for three hours. Would you care? I don't care. I really don't care. Between the bankrupt business and the bum nephew, I don't need a three-foot-tall Ethiopian anti-Semite. You, I don't need. Now what? Them a fish? Yeah, that's what them are. I've never been fishing. They told me that's one of the things you've done when you get sponsored. People take you fishing. I ain't never been fishing. So where do you live? 136th Street. Oh. No lakes on 136th Street, huh? You got a lake here? Yeah. I got a small lake. You ever fish in it? No, I don't fish. My son and I, we used to fish. My son, now he was a fisherman. Right, Benz? Uh, this kid could fish. Better than your old man. That's him. That's Benji. Soldier? Yes, sir. Second Lieutenant Bombardier. Where is he now? He was killed in a raid over a place called Stuttgart. I got a brother. His name's Bill. He's a Vietnam sergeant. Man, he's a tiger. He sent me a picture of him carrying a gun. Man, he's a real tiger. You say he's dead? Yeah. He was 19. That's 24 years ago. What about your mama? My mama? I mean, his mama. Oh, his mama. Oh, his mama passed away many years ago when he was a baby. I raised him. Who's this cat, Stanley? Don't ask about Stanley. Thanks to him, you took a bus ride for nothing. Where's this here lake? Oh, you want to go to the lake? Oh, that's easy. Yeah, sure. Here, you go out this door here, see? Go down this street. It's one mile south. When you come to Main Street, take a left, you go one mile. Lake Wanatushi. Wanatushi? That Jewish? The Jewish Indian. And in the meantime, I'm going to call the lady that's responsible for you so she could call your family, 136th Street. Now go along, go on, run along. And don't drown. When my brother come back, he gonna take me fishing. He promised me. My brother, when he say something, you gotta believe him. Oh, without question. That's a trait that runs in your family. Honor and invincibility. So what are you waiting for now, the Messiah? This here lake I'm going to. Nobody give me trouble, will they? I mean, I mean, I'm black. Now, who would give you trouble? Who would dare? You're the only nine-year-old on Earth that acts like Humphrey Bogart.
Now what? Nothing. Nothing. Meaning something. That mean nothing. Are you afraid to tell me? Afraid? No way, baby, no how. Well, so go ahead, tell me. Get it off your mind. Don't you ever go fishing? No, not since Benji died have I put a worm to a hook. Why? Nothing. Nothing. Nothing meaning, why don't you and I go fishing? Benji, an inspiration. Since the first of the month, I haven't taken in enough to pay the electric bill, and this fisherman from 136th Street thinks I got nothing better to do in life than to be a Huckleberry Finn. What that thing you say go run in the family? I don't know what you're talking about. What? A trait? Whatever you call it, you got the same thing going between Stanley and you. Oh, the itinerant philosopher. So tell me, what is this mysterious thing that binds me to my nephew? You're the same kind of cat. He get on the bus, and you hide behind the pastrami. Do you know what an Achilles heel is? No, so I'm not going to tell you. Maybe for an hour I'll take you, but no more than an hour. Maybe we could catch some big fish. Then you could sell them. Uh, Mr. Washington, with my luck, I will catch one minnow, a sunstroke, and a summons from the game warden. All right, come on, let's go. Question, in your luggage there, you got worms? So why are we taking it? So what are you standing there for? You got something to say? You forgot something. What might that be? Fishing poles. We ain't got no fishing poles. When you go fishing, you gotta have fishing poles. I'll say this for you, Herman. You got all the gaiety of an undertaker, but you're a very discerning boy. Very discerning. Stay here. Don't move. Just across the street. I've been crossing the street since I was two years old. Uh, did it ever occur to you that I might need help crossing the street? Oh, that's different. What'd you say your name was? Uh, Shaddock. Abe Shaddock. You don't like it? Make no difference to me what they call you. Let's go, Shaddock. Be right with you, Washington. All right, John, you see that little red boy there? That's called the barber. You gotta keep your eye on that, because that's where the bait is. The bait that the fish like. Now, hold this down here like this. You gotta move that every now What's and then. What's the bait? Are you gonna start asking a lot of questions? I'm not. This is only my first question. Well, 
An intelligent fish knows what he likes. That's all you have to know. Have to know. Hey, man, no. don't make me out to be stupid because you don't know. It was on the box. I didn't read it. Do you want to fish? Yeah. Do you know how to fish? No. Can zip your mouth and let me tell you. Tell yeah. me what? What the bait is? Keep it up. I'm going to throw you right in the water. Now, just here. You got to move it a little bit. Like this? That's too much. Too much? You want to get the fish's attention, but you don't want to scare them. See, now, when the little red ball starts to bounce, that's when you know the fish is nibbling. But don't get too anxious. Wait until that ball goes underneath the water. Then you know that the hook is sitting in the fish. I myself, and I admit this, have only conquered this in theory. But my son, Benji, oh, he was a fisherman. He had a nose for it. Nose? Yeah, an instinct, right from the start. Never had to tell him anything. Gee, I remember one time. Oh, that must have been, what, 37? Yeah, 37, 38. And we were over there. No, we were further down. And that kid, oh, he caught a trout. I mean, such a trout. I mean, this was a fish among all fish. You got but... something, man, you got something. Something's pulling. Well, what do I do? What do I do? I forgot what to do. Remind me what to do! Tell me what I... Look, I got a fish. Look, look, I got a fish. Look at this one. This here's a fish, and I got it. Look at this fish. I see the fish. Mr. Washington, a favor. I'll give you a minute to exalt in pulling in the fish. After that, be so kind as to pull in this ancient marriage. Herman, would you come and help me out of the water, please? It's not too much trouble. Yeah. Benji, today a revelation. I now know what kills old men, and it is not hardening of the arteries as I was told. No, it's softening of the brain inside there, asleep, is this small, dark shadow with a chip on his shoulder the size of a loaf. And you know what I was doing today, Benji? I went fishing in the lake with this boy. For you and I used to fish. But maybe we were further to the left. Then. Three and a half hours in the sun. Much of it spent underwater. Because your cousin Stanley has got the mouth of a whale and the intelligence of a sardine. the message you called, Mr. Shattuck. It's been so long, I've forgotten. I'm so sorry. We had a golf tournament. Miss Ross, for each day of your life, may you have a hole in one. But at this moment, I have problems of my own. I understand from the message that the boy has arrived and that he's here with you. Yeah. He's nephew. I thought your nephew... Don't mention the name, please. Mm. Now, have you found somebody else in town that can take this boy off my hand? That's why I'm here, Mr. Shattuck. I'm going to take the child myself. You make a good caddy. Mm -hmm. Well, you obviously can't stay here. Well, for once, we're in agreement. Between a 70-year-old Jew 
and a nine-year-old black boy, there is not, Miss Ross, what you would call a mutuality of interest. Well, you'll stay with me tonight, and I'll arrange to bring him home in the morning. Oh! Are you telling me that the membership roles of your pissy posse country club don't have one lousy family that's willing to take him? Well, given time, we'd find many, Mr. Shattuck. We want the boy to feel comfortable. I mean, given the situation, it's, you know. Enlighten me. Well, for a little black boy to be in a family. A black child? Just a minute, Mr. Shattuck. Your cardinal sin. Don't you make me out to be a bigot. And don't you make me out to be an idiot. I'm a long time on this earth. I'm an expert in bigotry. Mr. Shattuck, I want the boy to enjoy himself. I don't give a damn what color he is, but you don't take a child off of Harlem Street and stick him in a pool in a country club and expect him to make an adjustment between breakfast and lunch. Since when is swimming such a big adjustment? It's a sociological problem. You remind me of my nephew, Stanley. So busy dressing for the charity ball, he forgets what the charity is. Miss Ross, an act of kindness is not such a big deal when it comes in fashionable spasms during the social season. Do you understand what I'm saying? I think I'll take the boy now, Mr. Shattuck. Miss Ross, don't give yourself the trouble. The boy stays, maybe two days, maybe a week. That's very nice of you, Mr. Shattuck. Well, let me tell you something. You don't like my good deeds, I don't like yours. They're grudging, rotten-tempered afterthoughts using a child you couldn't care less about as a gesture to those of us you loathe. And I gather you loathe a lot of us, Mr. Shattuck. Which is my right, Miss Ross. Yes, Mr. Shattuck. And that proves the point. You don't have to go into a country club to find a bigot. You can find them in delicatessens. So we both drew a little blood, Miss Ross. But the boy stays. I am not the most gracious of men, as you pointed out, Miss Ross, but in my life, I have made a few friends. Good night, Mr. Shattuck. What are you gonna do with that? Who's the lady want? The lady. The lady wants to divest herself of her responsibility. It's the national pastime, Herman. The great American sport. Let George do it. Who's George? George, Tom, Dick, Harry, the other guy. We all do it. I do it myself. You sure didn't talk funny. Uh, do you have plans for that? Yeah. I'm gonna get his stuff. And then, I'm gonna get one of those metal things writing on it underneath. Oh, yeah, a plaque. Yeah, a plaque. And I'm gonna say on it, this fish caught by Herman D. Washington in honor of his brother Bill, Sergeant Green Berets. With much love from his brother, Herman D. Washington. Can I get all that in there? Yeah. In small print. Big, ain't she? Yeah. She's enormous. But we'll put her on ice so that by the time it reaches your brother, you'll be able to stand close enough to it to read the small print. Herman, I want to ask you something. I'll give you a choice. You can leave tomorrow morning on the bus, or you could stay here with me for a few days. Why? What do you mean, why? 
Why do you want me to stay? Did I say I wanted you to stay? I gave you a choice. I said you could stay if you wanted to, or you could go home tomorrow. I'll stay a couple of days. Hmm. I'm overwhelmed. Now you're gonna wash your hands. Come back here, you do it in the sink. You've been touching fish. And then after that, we're gonna go see what's playing at the movies. And then after that, we'll go and have some soda. And then we'll come back here and I'll spend half the night wondering why I'm going through all this trouble. <laughs> why are you looking at me all smart? You prefer rage? You know what my brother Bill say? No, I don't know what your brother Bill say. He say he don't care if Mr. Charlie hates him. And he sure as hell don't care if Mr. Charlie likes him. He say that Mr. Charlie should just get his foot off of him. That's what my brother Bill say. Well, do I have my foot on you? I just wanted to tell you. I'm staying because it's hot in New York. And here, I can go fishing. That's why I'm staying. Too bad you ain't black. seen all the people looking at us. So they was looking at us. I know what they thinking. So what were they thinking? They thinking. They thinking, what that little black boy doing with that old Jew? Listen. As one former ghetto dweller to another, a lesson a lesson, Herman, that maybe both of us should learn. Once two guys go fishing, or even to the movies, all they should care about is that they enjoy. That's fundamental. We're equal, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe more than we both realize. There's rats where I live. Great big ones. And the Johns stink. Ugh. You can smell them all over the building. If we equal, how come I gotta live there? When my brother come back, we're gonna move out of there. We're gonna move out to the country. And we're gonna spit right in that old jewel of landlord's eye. Mazeltov. But in the meantime, with this Jew, you're going to the movies. Know something, Herman? Soon you're gonna be indispensable to me. What that mean? That means that I won't know what to do without you. You wrong. You make a mistake, you gotta do it yourself. That's what my brother Bill told me. He said, don't ever leave and don't ever turn your back. That's what it's all about. Now, suppose somebody leans on you. Break his arm. Listen, my little black boy chick, even if you think it, don't say it, all right? I've tasted more hate in my life than I have wine. Oh, yeah, that's the, that's the one. 
He's supposed to be pretty good. Paul Newman and uh, that other fella. Two. What do you get? Yeah. Two fifty? Two fifty, uh huh. for the popcorn. When the cat with the shotgun gave it to that other bad cat, how come them two good guys leave the back door open? And them other bad cats are able to get out. Man, anybody know you gotta guard the back door when you got two bad cats up in the building? You know they got shotguns too? Uh, Herman, there's a couple of areas that I know nothing about. One is shotguns, and the other is bad cats. But they crazy enough to guard the back door. Well, maybe. I mean, you could be right. Oh, thank you. You finished? If it was me, man, I'd have guarded the back door. So we'll write to Hollywood and we'll put the question to them. Will that satisfy you? Maybe we do that. I give you the words. Okay. What do they call that? You'll dictate a letter. Yeah, I think I'd do that. Back doors. He would too. <laughs> where are you going, boy? I said, where are you going? Don't just stand there. Do a little soft shoe for us, huh? Yeah, let's see you do, boy. Oh, look who's here. Get a load of this. What a combination. What'd he say, Ike? The name is Shattuck, and that name is Washington. What's the matter, cowboys? You're bored, is that it? You have to go after an old man and a little boy? Is that it? I know who you are. You're Moses. And this must be one of Moses' children from a different marriage. <laughs> you know who they are? Two night crawlers in search of manhood. Manhood, huh? Oh, such courage. Such courtesy. Hey! <clears throat> Easy there, boy. Hey, Robin. Get the knife, Shaddy! Get the knife! Use the knife! Shaddy, get the knife! What's the trouble here? No trouble, man. No trouble at all. We're just on our way out. Hold it. Mr. Shattuck, you okay? Yeah. In the pink. Take off. You sure you're okay? Yeah. My friend and I, we're fine, thanks. Who belongs to this? That's mine. Yours? Definitely mine. Quite a weapon, Mr. Shattuck. Be careful with it. Give a holler if we need it. Good night. Good night. If I ever reach the point where I have to cut into another man's stomach, I will have lived too long. Where you been? You let some cat back you up against the wall and you don't do nothing about it? Man, you ain't gonna live long enough. And you would have used it. If I had to. Which is perhaps the worst thing about prejudice. The haters turn the victims into haters. You line up the two teams, 
And who could tell them apart? Come on. We go home. Shut it. You don't make any difference. But you ain't no chicken. I'm not. No. You're a tiger. Tiger, huh? Then why is my heart beating like it's trying to come out of my body? You're a tiger. But you're an old tiger. <laughs> But then the least you could do is help me down the street, you gangster. Oh, my goodness, look at the time. It's past midnight. You have a toothbrush? Okay, so we go to bed now. So run along. This is an invitation for you to swim at the country club swimming pool. Reeking of perfume and misplaced contrition. You're talking crazy again. You want to go swimming? Shall we accept? Yeah. Sure. Now go to bed. before I came here. What did I do? Yeah. I mean, you don't go fishing. You don't go to the movies. You don't drink no soda. You know, you're right. This is the first movie I've seen since Myrna Loy. I used to love Myrna Loy. And that chocolate soda. You know, I've forgotten how good a soda tastes. So at the risk of leaning on you, Herman, it seems as though you have opened up my life a little. And at the further risk of listening to your 136th Street eloquent philosophy, I'm grateful. You grateful, huh? I am. Good night, Shaddy. <laughs> you know, Benji, you give the world fishing poles and ice cream sodas, or you'd have so much brotherhood, even God would smile. Here, please. Yes. What are they doing here? Who? Them. I don't know. We'll find out. Excuse me. Sir? Hi, I, I wasn't on duty when when you came in this morning. We had those things happen. I let it go this time. Look at me, Shaddy. This is how you crawl. Uh, oh, yeah. He's available for lessons in the afternoon. You can tell the members. Well, the, the pool is open to members and guests. You mean it's restricted? I'm afraid so. Well, that's the way it should be. Can't have every Tom, Dick, and Harry running around here. No, absolutely. Is there a problem? Uh, no, I. Good. Are you a guest? 
Oh, yes, we are here at the invitation of Miss Gloria Ross. Oh, I see. Well, uh, thank you very much. I was wondering if I might have your name? Uh, Shattuck. Abel Shattuck and Herman D. Washington. Thanks. Think nothing of it. Herman, our enemies are multiplying. In the nighttime, it's the Hell's Angels. In the daylight, it's society matrons. From the Bellicopes to the Bericopes. <laughs> Nice to see you, ma'am. <laughs> You're quite the little Johnny Weissmuller, aren't you? And how does the water feel? You're one of the Smellman children, aren't you? There's no need to be offended, child. What I meant was, I was simply trying to identify you. I am elated that we can share some of the benefits of our club with you. I am altogether delighted. I'm gonna do a feet first. I ain't gonna hold my nose or nothing. I'm just gonna go down real deep, then I'm gonna do the Australian crawl. <laughs> Isn't that just the cutest thing? And you're Mr. Um, Shattuck, is it? I think it is charming what you are doing, Mr. Shattuck. Uh, what am I doing? Well, taking care of that little boy. Uh, I think it is an absolutely marvelous gesture, Mr. Shattuck. Well, I'm all hot. <laughs> Makes you wonder sometimes, with all the riots and the violence. There is no reason on this earth why we can't get on together. Of course, the problem is that this sort of thing will never get into the papers. I suppose if some Mississippi policeman hit one of them on the head with a chain, well, that's big news. But here we are. We are opening up our facilities, and that sort of thing just never gets mentioned. Well, there's no doubt about it. You are the humanitarian of all humanitarians. You're being sarcastic? Me? Sarcastic? When out of the goodness of your heart, you let a child jump off a diving Believe me, lady, I know how much that takes out of you. Did I say I had a big heart? Strike that. You have a big heart. Well, I have no intention of sitting here in my own club and letting the likes Hello, of you... Hello, Mrs. Parker. Gloria. Yes. They are your guests. They are? Yeah. Well, this gentleman gets no honors for civility. Mrs. Parker. Please. You go to the locker room, Herman, and change your clothes. We're gonna go to the lake. At the lake, we can both swim as well as fish. And here, there's difficulty breathing. And there is also a problem with the pollution. Telephone call for you, Miss Ross. Long distance. I'll be right there. You don't need to leave, Mr. Shaddy. No, on the contrary. You've been very kind. Thank you for the invitation, and Herman had a good time. But obviously, we're crowding the lake. You must have better eyesight than I do, Mr. Shaddy. I don't see any lady. <laughs> yes? Who? I'm, af I'm afraid I can't understand you. You have to speak louder. Mrs. Washington? I see. I'm truly so sorry. I... Do you want us to tell the boy? 
That's all right. That's all right. Mrs. Washington, I'm I'm so so sorry. I'm I'm truly sorry. Yeah, he's uh He's changing his clothes in the locker room over there. So. I'll get a glass of water if I could. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, the kids have been in the hot sun, and I could use a slip myself. See, the best thing is just get out of here, you know, as soon as possible, because, you know, somebody's going to say something to him. And me with my big mouth. Well, you've Mr. been very Shady. nice. I want to thank you again. Mr. Mr. Shattuck, that call was from Herman's grandmother. Oh, yeah. yeah. Apparently, he had a brother in Vietnam. Oh, you should hear the kid talk about that brother. Lawrence of Arabia and Joe Lewis, all rolled into one. He's dead, Mr. Shattuck. What? The grandmother just received the telegram. He was killed on Monday. Hmm. Oh, God. But who's going to tell him? Well, the grandmother suggested that we do. We do? What do you do? I don't know. Well, it's easy. You just stick a hole in a little boy's heart and watch him bleed. What can I do, Mr. Shadding? What can any of us do? Just tell him and pray. Pray that there's some stuff in this kid and he won't be destroyed. Are you gonna tell him now? No. No, not here. Yeah. Mr. Shattuck, he's coming. Thanks for letting me swim. <laughs> it's all right. You sick? No. No, Herman, I'm not sick. We going to the lake now? Yeah, why not? We got to stop by the Dell Contestant and get the fishing poles. Well, if that's what you want. You sure you ain't sick? Oh, maybe just a little. I'll, I'll see you both later. Bye. Bye, honey. Miss Ross looks a little sick, too. Gloria, my dear. I don't mean to make a thing of this. This is hardly personal. Isn't it? <laughs> but certain lines have to be drawn. I mean, to invite that old man and that... That old man and that soon-to-be-ravaged, wounded little boy are the only honest-to-God human beings within a radius of a hundred miles of this swimming pool. And that, Mrs. Parker, is meant to be extremely personal. I want to tell you something. It's something very serious. What? Look at me, Herman. We got a call from your grandma. It 
was about your brother Bill. And and something happened. Your brother is dead. Can I come in? Well, the bus it doesn't leave for about an hour, so we got plenty of time. Another fish? The enormous one. You keep it. Eat it or sell it. I ain't gonna eat it. Well, I thought I would have it mounted for you. With your name and gold, you know. I don't want it. I call it for Bill. Herman, if I said something to you, would you listen? Come here. Long time ago, 25 years. I received a telegram in this very room. And you see, uh, telegrams don't change. Wars change, the enemies change, but the words used to tell the living about the dead, they don't change. We regret to inform you that your son, Second Lieutenant Benjamin Shattuck, was killed in action. June 15, 1944, in a bombing mission over Stuttgart, Germany. And I must have read that telegram oh, over a hundred times. It got so that the words, they were just floating. And you feel like, you feel, you feel like your life is in that some vital part of your body has been stripped and that you'll never, well, well, you'll, you'll never smile, laugh, enjoy. You feel the way you must feel now. That the sorrow is just unbearable. The tears will never end. But you know, Herman, the tears do end somehow. Some way, the crying does come to an end. Long time. Long time ago. Just a little kid then. I got roller skates, see? And I 
start down the steps. And I fall. And man, it hurt real bad. And the bell come out. And go down the steps. And he pick me up and say, Hermie. Hermie, don't you cry. Shady. Not me. I ain't never gonna cry. You are a very brave boy, and you really are an incredibly brave boy. So you stay here and uh, just uh, finish your packing. When it's time, uh, I'll call you when it's you cry? He nothing to you. He never even know my brother. So why are you crying, man? I cry because I'm old. I cry at the irony of things. I cry because fine young men die. And old men just go on. That's up to him. I mean, the weather is so bad. It is. It's raining real hard. I don't want you to be alone. Okay. I'll drive you, all right? Is I right with you? Yeah. I'm truly sorry, honey. Herman? You want me to drive them with you? No. You stay here. Goodbye.
just want to say something. Don't you cry no more, understand? We will make out. You and me. We will make out. We're gonna go fishing. I'll come back. We're really gonna come back. Yes. What? A collect call. A collect call from who? I shouldn't ask. Mr. Banner. All right, I'll take it. Hello, Stanley. What? Uh, I'm sorry that thing blew up. Yeah, yeah, you can come back. Yes, you can come home and stay as long as you want. No, not there. That space is reserved for Herman. That's right. Herman Washington, he's a friend of mine. A very close and personal friend, and that room will be saved for him. Upstairs. Upstairs, Stanley. You can have the room upstairs. Think nothing of it. Goodbye. So, baby. The dead come in all colors, but you... You already know that. Unfortunately, we are still learning. Oh, look at how, how it's raining. It's raining real hard, and this is a real summer storm. And this, I guess, will end the heat. Yeah. End the heat and cleanse the earth. God, how we need it.